go to young horses under three, they're free of charge. Because it it gives you or it gives the customer a start to encourage them and the the old thing with vets um, used to be don't touch it until it's got a full mouth or five. So if there's any problems um, with their baby teeth, deciduous teeth, they, they haven't got any chance, you know. The, the mouths are wrecked to, before they start. So uh, we, do, we do quite a few stud farms um, and we always check them at birth just to make sure the teeth are in the right place and, and also if you if are careful with them and quite calm and relaxed they accept what you're doing so if they've got a problem in later life they, it's, it's not a really great trauma so, uh, so that's, that's what we try and do Um, there's some bits in here that well, uh, might be quite useful to you. Um, the dental world has adopted a numbering system. They call it the triadan system. The common thing with teeth or equine teeth is people think they grow throughout their life. They don't. Equine teeth only grow until they're five or six year old. See, the skull that we've had cut away. <coughs> That's the extent of the, the tooth. This this was about ten year old. So he's he's got about four years worth of wear on there um, but they continue to erupt throughout their life until approximately 24 25 over the last five ten years they're getting to keep erupting a little bit longer because we're um, caring for them and feeding them a lot better than we than we used to. So um, they're continuing to grow or uh, erupt. The the problem is when tooth have erupt, erupted all the growth pattern, um, once they've stopped erupting that's all they get. So it's really important to have a good chewing pattern on older horses because once they stop erupting there's nowhere to go. The tooth has um, an upper tooth has a three point crown and the lower tooth has a two point crown and that's all that holds it in. This would have been about 25, 26 year old pony and that's all it's, that's left of its tooth. When they become loose in the mouth, they polish. Only two, two pegs, isn't it? When the dentist comes to look at your horse or pony, the real job for the equine dentist is to make the horse pony eat well. If it becomes, it performs a lot better, it's an extra bonus. It's predominantly a health issue, teeth. Um, it's predominantly to keep the, uh, the equine healthy. And we, although we age by year, in our practice, um, after five, so after the, all the milk teeth have gone, we tend to put the horses in groups, age-wise. Because you 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 
want to know how strong the tooth is going to be before you work on it. So working on a five, six year old tooth is a real <coughs> total difference between five and six and a twelve year old tooth. A twelve year old tooth is really established. And then after that, when you get to the higher teens, um, they go soft again. So if you put the same amount of pressure on an old tooth that you would a 12, 13 year old horse's teeth, you can wipe the teeth away. Um, we, don't, we don't use electric on, on our practice. Um, mainly because I've seen so many people use it that aren't, have got no conscience. I've seen teeth glowing, I've seen horrendous problems with it. Also, um, you, for insurance wise, to use electric, whether it be battery powered or mains powered, they have to be sedated now. Oh, nice. Yeah. If if you if you work on an animal and it isn't sedated, if it if why forbid, but if it has a problem, it nullifies your insurance. Mm -hmm. Has that been in uh, in I can't think of the words I'm looking for in... Is it just come in that? Yeah, well, it, it, it came in? it came in when the animal welfare bill changed. Um, the insurance companies are really getting strong on, on it at the moment because they've... The dentist in America went all electric. They didn't, they didn't train anyone with hand rolls at all for about 18 months. And... The reason was they bought out a electrical company, mm. so they were selling masses of electric to European people, which is all right, but you have to provide them with a the conscience, mm. you know. Um, and the trouble is, the the foods and feeding stuff in the states and Canada. Um, they, they don't need teeth as such with a chewing surface because their silica is so soft. Yeah. They need rollers just to roll the food and process it. Where in Europe, the silica content of the grasses and the fodder is so high, they need a, a crunching surface. And the problem is, some guys were coming back from the States um, and cutting the teeth as, as the same as <coughs> they were in the States. And the horses couldn't process it and every time we had the course in the States um, you, could, you could count untold colics because they were just cutting That's the really teeth. Interesting. That's really interesting. Yeah. Because they're, they're, they're cutting it as if it's it soft, a soft platform to, to work from. And you can't. Um, when you look at some of the, some of the teeth, the, the occlusal surface, although they're quite angled, the occlusal surface is quite sharp. The power of the occlusal surface to grind the food with. And also, um, horses are quite different to other animals. Um, they don't swallow their food down the centre of the mouth. Um, they roll the food up. They start the chewing action, the mastication pattern, and they eat like a figure of eight pattern. If you, if you, the best way of looking at it is if you stand behind the horse 
at its grazing, you see the, the movement going either way. So they start the mastication pattern and they nip the grass and with the bowls of the mouth push it back into the into their faces and it divides. When you look at the tongue, the tongue's quite flat until it becomes level with the first cheek tooth and then it gets a hump. And it's the hump and the volume of tooth is designed so as when they chew they keep the food outside to the teeth and they, they process it and roll it into a cigar shape and it, it transfers up the mouth until it gets to the last molar and then it drops down the throat. If you have a problem with anything that uh, is teeth and orientated, if it's in a stable you get these long streaks of like cigars over the door mm. and that's purely that the, the food has gone in caught an obstruction and then when they go to take the next bite it comes spilling out because they can't hold it. Did they so, used to call that quidding? Quidding, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so can they uh, continue to roll even when you know very elderly horses? Can yeah, they continue the, only, to roll? the only trouble with very very old horses is they sometimes wear the enamel off the teeth yeah. and the next layer down is dentine and dentine gets very slippery mm. so they they tend to whiz it about right. um, our older horse tends to get balls of food rather than a cigar shape because they they trap it on the tooth right. and then when they put their head down it comes out and they can't can't catch it Right. So, uh, and also you, um, with the teeth erupting all the time, it's um, quite regular to look at a younger horse and it's quite wide in the head. Mm. And when the teeth erupt through, there's nothing to, to fill the gap, so they sink in the, in the head. So if you look at a holder, an older pony, they're really narrow. They've got the bone yes. and they're really narrow. So there's, there's nothing to, to keep the skin and bone out there. So it's, a, it's another aging thing. You can see that. I'm sorry this, this one's a bit tacky, but it's been... You see that yeah. you can see the bones mm. are just guiding round the, the teeth. Mm. Use a baby that one. Mm. She's um, Quite nice little girl. She's um, still got the milk teeth in there. You can see. It's quite. It's quite different. The the uh, one of the things we don't do. Um, we don't put a gag on anything up up until. Two, unless it's really a cold blood, because all the heads are made up in plates, and it's very, very common to put a gag on and break the plate. Um, the, yeah, the ILPH have got a pony called Oliver Twist that's got his mm. nose broken, and it was, it was. The dentist they used at the time put the gag on and stretched it too much and it broke his nose. We do try and make the uh, dental visits as enjoyable 
for the for the pony as possible. Um, all the rasps we use are flavoured. Um, we, we buy a elixir from the states that's sent over, and we coat all the rasps and bake them in the oven. So uh, the wet they get, and the more flavour they get. Off. And uh, all the gags that we use are all they're all um, quietly rolling gags. So it means that they they the old gags used to really clunk when you opened them. Mm -hmm. These have got about 13, 14 little ratchets, so they just roll really easy. Um, and they've they've got plates that are flavoured as well. And we use mouthwashes and gels and anything that, that makes it easy for the animal, you know. Um, I was saying earlier, we, I did my training with a, a lady in America um, and she was a very passionate one about the paradigm. The paradigm in the States equates to the life of the horse, what it does, what it eats, how it's used, what processes it's been through. And we, we try and live a, or we try and work with a conscience. Um, a lot of dentists at the moment, um, and vets, um, as soon as they get to the stable block, they just want to put a needle in. Um, it's not fair on the animal. It's really not fair on the animal. With a, a little bit of horsemanship and a bit of patience, you can do anything. So there's some bits of arcades, dental arcades. Um, the lower arcade on the right is completely straight, but the upper arcade has a has a quite nice turn on it. Um, because the, the the straightness of the lower arcades, if you set them up right tooth wise, you get 95% of occlusion on the teeth. The, the one thing that we strive for in the road we call it three point balance. It's the balance between the TN joint, the molars and the incisors. There's uh, a new college opened up um, in the States by an equine dentist and he's, he's got the belief of every animal that he looks at has to have drastic incisor work. Um, the, only, the only reason he's doing so much incisor work is that he's doing the cheap teeth bioelectric and he's taking so much tooth off that when they shut the mouth the cheap teeth don't meet. So he has to do incisor work. Um, and he's making a, a quite a good living out of teaching people how to do incisor work that to be honest is not necessary. If he'd, if he'd balanced the, the arcades of teeth, how they should be balanced, um, he wouldn't need to do it. But it goes back to using too much electric. Too much. So, uh, it'll come over here, there'll be a, there'll be a raw for a little while and then it will die a death. Um, in the next diagram, um, 
One of the things that is hard when we get called out to, to look at teeth, one of the things that is hard is explaining to people um, how much the teeth go back. You know, they, they think they, they only go back as far as I can see. Um, and also, um, the um, three moulders at the back, their roots is, are in the sinus area, the sinus pocket. And um, it's, it's very easy to make a mistake and diagnose sinus problems when it is tooth problems. Um, the liquid that comes out their nose is very, very similar. Um, so we get to, to look at a lot of really smelly animals. Mm. I um, trimmed one the other week and it had just had the dentist. Mm. And it covered, it was just, I don't, it was like a clear yellow. Yeah. And it just covered my hair in it. But it's, would that have been from the sinus? Sinus, right? yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Was it, <laughs> um, was it, um, it was like clear yellow. Yeah, and, yeah but yeah. if you tell, touched it, was it a sort of oily? I only touched it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You can get, feel the growth bumps in sometimes. Yeah, it? they, um, um, how, how would you know when that becomes a problem, i.e. if the cap's not come on properly? Heat. Okay. That one's got yeah. the start of it. Yeah. And normally is, is the cap hasn't come off, the baby tooth has right. not come off. The trouble is, if they're if they're left and the cap retains, they'd explode out the bottom. Mm. Um, a lot of people mistake it for strangles mm. Mm. because it, it's a, a really violent explosion. But once it explodes out the bottom, um, you can't repair the, the jaw. Mm. You can't seal the jaw. So they have a physio all their life. And what's the cause of that? Just just the baby teeth. And no coming out. Okay. Just no no um, known cause then. Um well it's it the if the baby teeth come don't come out they the the teeth sit Oh sorry if they don't the come out from the they, they, right, they okay. go, oh, yeah. so so yeah. this one's yeah I thought you meant they yeah, sorry. come out and you still got those. Um and if they don't come out they heat up because the, the tooth, the adult tooth is growing mm. um, and they can't grow up so they grow out. Right, I see. Mm. And then they just explode and... So it's the adult teeth doing it really? Yeah. yeah. Yes. It's the growth pattern doing it unfortunately. So, so would you be able to tell, tooth. you can tell that's happening as, as a dentist, so yeah. then, would you then remove the... Yeah. We normally we normally okay. wait until it, it gets hot enough to, to fill by hand. They normally when they're getting to the hot stage they get really uncomfortable with their heads yeah. and every time you touch it they, they flex and they should they should have all their adult teeth through between four and a half and five. So that heat issue so that the heat stuff would um, take. about Two and a half to about three and a half, right. and then it's it's all the associated teeth coming through. So um, you've not no, have five. you noticed any patterns in when that's happening through your work? Um, not patterns. We we it gets very prevalent in breeds. 
Right. I bear in breeds are terrible for right. it. Right. Mm. Absolutely <laughs> horrendous. <laughs> Quite funny because I've just had one this week that's yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, they, they've yeah. got bits sprouting yeah. everywhere. Right. Yeah. We uh, we run two <laughs> clinics down in Portugal, and every yeah every fold you see has got it. Right. Um, they don't graze Lu as much Lu though, do they? Yeah, and Andalusians. Mm. It doesn't doesn't matter. They will it. Mm. And also they uh, the Iberian breeds. Um, the jaw is a little bit. The lower jaw is a little bit longer than most breeds, and uh, they get they get this sort of thing. was an Iberian pony and uh, he actually killed himself. Quite a later ratio. Yeah, um, he, he hadn't, hadn't had any maintenance um, and the spike, I think it was his side, the spike had get, it got so big it um, burrowed into the jaw above the um, artery wow. and bled to death. Oh. Mm -hmm. but, uh, and it was all, all down to lack of maintenance. Mm -hmm. yeah. Depends on how, how the horse is kept. Um, competition horses that don't have a lot of grazing, we do four monthly. Really? Um, because they they eat concentrate all the time, mm. and they would finish a bowl of concentrate in about 10, 15 minutes, rather than grazing all day, mm. and they don't use their teeth. Mm. Do you see what I've done for carriage as well? Yeah. Mm. Um, normal, normal animals that are grazed or coming overnight that aren't used consistently. Um, we tend to nine months a year. We do a load of riding schools that the councils insist on them being done every six months. Okay. You know, nice so it's, it's a real mix. You know, it's, it depends on okay. how they're kept in <coughs> age. Really good competition horses. It's, and it's, there's, there's three types of flow. Um, we break it down into three categories. There's the health flow, which is just taking the sharp edges off and balancing them out. There's the working flow that, that gives them a little bit more. Um, and there's the competition float. The competition float, it takes the sides of the teeth, it makes them smooth. So was, um, when, they, when they use the um, air vents to, to take more air in, um, they don't have any restriction. Um, this one in particular that's had a bit seat on there. Um, boot seats could can work really well on certain types of animals. Um, if you've got a cob that's really fleshy in the mouth it could work really well because with bit seats um, it gives them a little bit more room for when you take contact with the bit, you rock up the skin inside the mouth. Um, and if they've got if they've got a square edge on the front of the tooth, you trap the square edge, you, know, you trap the skin in between the square edge and the bit. 
um, it's, it becomes really uncomfortable for them. Um, bit seats have been about for years and years and years, but there were about five years ago an equine dentist moved his, his area and he needed something to uh, promote, so he reinvented bit, bit seats. So uh, they came in again. But um, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Um, but what does that make a difference if they don't work to force his balance? Yeah. And it, and it, the trouble is, it, because they're shaped the way they are, do any maintenance themselves. Mm -hmm. So when they get sharp, they stay sharp. Mm -hmm. you know, um, we don't we don't tend to do bit seats too often. I prefer sort of natural um, rounding of the tooth rather than yeah. cutting the tooth away to to anything. Um, you can make a you can make a horse's mouth really really good, and you don't have to be extreme with it. And when you've done your work, although you don't use the drills, do you recommend a rest period? Um, it depends on how much work they've have, have mm -hmm. done. If it's just maintenance, um, we normally say 24 to 48 hours. Okay, because a lot of dentists don't do um, so yeah. you can write it straight away. Yeah. Isn't? No. Yeah. Um, and also, we, as a as a group of dentists that, that work for us and we work together, we spend an awful lot of money on equipment. I won't use a blunt blade. I think it's detrimental to the to the animal. It's sometimes a trauma to have um, an animal with its mouth open for too long. So we try and do everything we can possibly reach before we put a gag on. And then we just put the gag on, do the bits that we have to do and take it off. Because I'm, I'm petrified the dentist really much more. But I can't imagine sitting there, I've, I've seen dentists having mouth open for an hour, hour and a quarter. Wouldn't break? Yeah. But then why doesn't the owner say something? Well, it's just like, just don't. Yeah. But mm. the owner well, shouldn't, don't they shouldn't they have to. The conscience of the dentist. You're, right, you're yeah. correct. You know, so but, but you don't say something because it's what you do. But yeah. I don't. If I think back when I was a kid and I see the dentist and that, it didn't even question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I went straight in, put it in the horse was just yeah. you just told him it, mm -hmm. making it worse. So it didn't yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but they didn't have power tools and that going no, back, did they? they yeah. were Owners trust, don't they? Yeah. Trust yeah. Them, yeah. They yeah. trust. And we, we try as well to get the owner involved with mm -hmm. the procedures. You know, we're, we're forever saying, do you want to feel this, or do you want to, mm. when we've got, we got the gag on, just just feel it. Yes. And we we try and do one side and let them feel the difference between mm. the teeth on one side and the other. And you'd be surprised how many owners go, well, well that's, that's really nice, isn't it? Because they just don't realise, mm. you know, it's it's... You don't know what you don't know, do you? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's fine. Does the horse tell you when it needs a break from yeah. the gag? Yeah. So what sort of things? Shaking what's the head. Shaking the head and... Um, I... I take a little bit of time before I start an any animal. Because I find that they've all got the comfort zone. So if you just stand and glance over the door, um, 
it will position itself in its comfort zone. So when you start work on it, if you are quiet and calm and go to its comfort zone, you've done half the battle, you know. So I train quite a lot of dentists and the worst of the dentists are European guys because they're all macho and guys are terrible. <laughs> I'll stop <laughs> cheating guys because <laughs> they throw their hands about and shout and scream and all it does is put the horse on edge. And also you, you, if you get a, a little bit of a scared owner we, we normally say, put the kettle on, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> yeah. you can see the fear running up, up the loop right here, and the horse goes, <laughs> yeah, get, get away from me. <laughs> so uh, we, try and, we try and be as quiet and calm as, as we can. Um, I've got a little bit of a name for doing horses that no one would own here. I love that. <laughs> I, love, I really get a buzz out of working on rearing horses. <laughs> oh, they're lovely. Because <laughs> you've got to think all the time. Yeah. And people don't realise um, a horse won't rear if it's coming forwards. They only rear when they push them back. And you see so many dentists um, want them to stand perfectly still. But they're a flight animal. Mm. If they're scared, they move about. So you've got to learn to dance. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's easy. They've got discomfort somewhere as well. Yeah, and they'll, they'll move. Mm. So we've got a, we've just taken over a show pony yard in the stuff, that's it. And uh, we've taken it over from a friend, the dentist. He said, could you come and do it? He said, because I'm going to end up slapping one of them. He said, they're, they're just testing my patience. I can't, I can't do it anymore. So I went there. And you know how you walk in the yard and you think, something's wrong. Yeah. And I looked and looked and I couldn't sort it out. I couldn't get my mind around it. And it was a nice square stone yard with an arch to go in and a really big horse walker in the middle. Well, I started the first one and it, I'm quite quick because I don't hang about and let them sort of stand there with his mouth open too much. And I did the first move and it took me about an hour and three quarters and it was up in the wall and it was trying to box the door and it threw itself on the floor twice. Oh. Um, we just, we did it but it was, it was, and just, I was having a breather, and she got um, seven mares and a stallion. So she led the stallion out and put it on the horse walker, and as soon as she shut the door of the horse walker, it went, <sighs> that's funny. So I finished the mare that I was doing and said, can I do the stallion next? She said, yeah, yeah, what do you want? So she went to get him out of the horse walk. I said, low loon. And I did him walking backwards around the horse walk. <laughs> and you know, he was a darling. And I did the other six on the horse walker. And I couldn't work out what it was, you know, what was wrong. And I said, uh, where did you turn them out? She said, oh, well, they, they haven't good. We don't have grazing. I said, right, I said, so when do they graze? She said, oh, end of the show pony year, they have a month off in my sister's field. But um, the only time they go out of the box, if it's not a show, they go in the horse walker. So that's where they're relaxed. And every one, as soon as you, they shut the door and the horse walker, it went, <sighs> It was all right until you dropped something. You go all the way. <laughs> <laughs> but she's, uh, she's made them 
made me a bucket now, so as it, it fixes on the side of <laughs> the horse water. So, uh, but it's it's crazy. So. And it's just as simple as that to 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 do what the to be adaptable to do the job and just think of what the horse is going through. You know. A lot of it's about intent, your intent as well. Isn't yeah. It? Yeah, you can't. I, I work for the veterinary service and they, they have five years of training and they don't touch an animal until the fifth year. Anything that they do, they in, um, practice injections, but they practice on oranges. But when they go in the stable with a with a horse, they go at him like <laughs> like like he's a an yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it puts it puts the animal on edge straight away, you know. We're going to Tuesday because it's they've got their end of year finals, the dentist room. Oh god, he's coming in. <laughs> <laughs> So what when you see a new client, I know that you, you talked about the paradigm, but um, yeah. what are the main things you want to know? Like do you ask about like you know, this morning we're talking about bits, do you ask about the bit or yeah. is that Yeah, we uh, we ask about how it's kept. Mm. Um what feed it has. Um what disciplines it does and how often. Um, if it's a competition horse and it's a new customer, we sometimes ask them to put the bridle on mm -hmm. just as we sit. Mm -hmm. and, so. and there's there's certain things that um, we suggest. I don't like nose bands. And I don't like hay nets. Mm -hmm. um, we we have well, we have nets, but we have had in the past driving horses at home, and we get a real problem with them feeding out hay nets because they're a fly animal. We put out some of the hay out the hay net, and then look out the door, mm -hmm. or some hay look out the door, and they get. A form of repetitive strain because they only use the same muscles. And if you if you suggest to someone put the hay net one side of the door one night, the other side, they go, oh, I never thought of that. But it's it's it isn't rocket science, but it really makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Really makes a difference. Um, I tend to let people talk. The more knowledge you get for the animal, um, the better you can treat it. Um, I've got a, a man in Portugal that writes me a script every time he has a horse or a new horse. <coughs> I'll get sort of two, two A4 pages of what done, what it's done and how it looks and but it's lovely because at, at the end of the day it's caring for the animal and it gives you a pointer um, to where if there's a problem to where to start looking. about ageing, um, we age to groups, um, in the back of your little folder there's an ageing chart, now it's, it's the best one that we've found at the moment, 
um, the three bits with coffee on. Um, as working dentists, we then don't tend to use them anymore because they've been superseded. Um, but they, uh, it's pretty accurate. The other thing in Holland, we've got a study at the moment of um, 20 plus years of age horses and they've found that um, at 20 they get a mustard coloured ring on their corner incisors and the mustard stretches up to gum as the tooth erupts and they reckon they're 99% accurate with the ageing. Um, they say it goes, the mustard works down the tooth um, at a millimetre a, a year. So mm -hmm. they've got a, a couple of three years to go before they can definitely, uh, but that'll be one of the they could work out some dealers out, wouldn't Oh, it? yeah. <laughs> You'd be surprised if the dealers, when you get there, and they'll say, uh, can you make it one seven, or can you make that one nine? Or, <laughs> or, no, 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 no. But a lot of the dealers do their own, so. The trouble with the equine dentistry, there's no real rules and mm. anything guidelines, I mean you can you can go into Robinsons and buy yourself a full set of kit. Mm. So it's just Yeah, the friend as a kid, her mum was like well, I think it would be a years ago, she was a hairdresser one week and then yeah. she started doing all his teeth. Yeah. It's like that <laughs> But yeah, she does their teeth, yeah. The only the only thing that is is we find it's really good. Um, we ensure through the and they are really, really strict with equine dentists. Um, we have to produce evaluation sheets for every horse that we do. And we leave a copy with a customer and we have a, a duplicate and they have a, a little man, he's a really nice guy. They have a little man that comes around and inspects your day diary. And we we log everything in the day diary. And if we go to, say the first job in the morning, it's got seven animals. It has a seven with a ring around it. And we have to log seven evaluation sheets for that day and he does come around and count them mm -hmm. <laughs> we give him like egg boxes full <laughs> oh god but it's great because it one of the things that is nice about it it proves to people that well it should prove to people that we're trying to be legitimate yeah. you know there's, there's a lot of cowboys that have got one rasp and a block of wood, you know, and they're stuffing a block of wood and they're rasping. And we, we try to get away from that. It's unfortunate that the, the regulation didn't go through for them. It was, we worked really hard to get it set up. So um, that... What, what hap what's happened to training in this country? Because it was going somewhere, and yeah. then did it collapse a bit? Yeah, or? They, the committee that they appointed to, to run it made such strong demands on people that wanted to do the exam. It wasn't liable. They, uh, they insisted before you got approved to go on the exam, you had to have 400 cold case histories. 
Oh, so learn well, it and then see if you yeah, can do it. Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, <laughs> Teach yourself. Um, you mm -hmm. had um, an electrical <laughs> kit, or they wouldn't accept you on the exam. Um, and it it was it got farcical. They did a exam at as well, and. One of the guys that we trained um, let them use their let them use their horses for the exam, and he brought in seven horses, and there was nine people to do the exam, huh. and there was five vets and four dentists, and they let the five vets do it in the morning, and sedate them to have the, and they all passed. And then in the afternoon they resedated them, mm. and the four equine dentists did the thing, and two of them failed. But how could they fail on horses that already been done? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and one failed because he had a T-shirt on that said uh, horse dentist, not an equine dental technician. Right. And it's about two and a half grand to sit the exam. So, um, their membership went down from equine dentist wise. The membership went down from about four hundred European wise to about seven, oh. and it's just turned out to be a dental club for vets. But um, luckily, the saw what was going on, and as long as you can prove that you're you've had training, um, they'll enjoy you. So uh, it's it's really regu regulated by the insurance companies now. So it's. It's taken a step back from where it was going. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So just mm -hmm. going back on um, what Caroline was showing us earlier in the yard with the yeah. muscles and looking at the chewing action, do you yeah. also go through that process? Yeah. You do? Yeah. Every time. Because yeah. mm -hmm. we, we, we like to see uniform mm. heads. You know, um, yeah. so we can learn as much from the outside as what you can from putting a gag in, and mm -hmm. so we do it everywhere. So you are assessed from the outside and the muscle tone and everything, and yeah. that sort of gives you what you're expecting to feel yeah. when you get yeah. inside. Okay. We get we got a lot of horses that are locked up one side. You know, you, you move the, the um, lateral movement, you move the teeth, the, the lower jaw one way, it, it works really well. And you go the other way and it can't get past the centre point. And normally they've got a good muscle there and no muscle there, or the TM joints really close one mm. side. And, uh, Normally, normally you can put that right by balancing the mouth. So we were talking about bits earlier, and obviously yeah. what that does. Do you notice that um, there's more impact on? I know it's the whole bigger picture, but yeah, they, um, bits tend to go in fads, don't they? You know, what whatever's on the front of the cover of the horse and hound, <laughs> everyone wants. <laughs> You know, it's just stupid. You yeah, know. yeah. You get John Whitaker in the bubble bit, yeah. and every time you see a horse, he's got a bubble bit on him. <laughs> you know, you know. Do you Do recommend they? this? Um, on what you've just I'm, done? I'm, I trained as a Lorena. Okay. I used to, to lecture for the Lorena Association, and they used to have two really good <coughs> courses they had. A course for 
people that worked in shops and the trade and forbidding and they had a junior, or they called it a junior course for um, the public just, just to enlighten them what bits they could use and things like that. They stopped the shop one for a while. Um, I, th I, I think it was finance, really. Um, but it's it's surprising the the questions you get when you sort of go and look at a horse. They're always, how old is it? What bit should I use? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and it's again and again and again. Um, do you think there's a lot of ignorance there? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, in all the uh, horses we have at home, um, we ride and drive in Waterfords. Mm. And people say, oh, they're a really severe bit. They're only severe, as severe as mm. the hands are. Yeah. You know? You can, you can have a, a really nice snaffle, but if you've got heavy hands, they're, they're lethal. Um, I did about three months on the tour when years ago when they came, they launched their all singing and dancing rains that had <laughs> been in America for 50 years. And the one thing that they didn't do, they didn't point out in the brochure or the little book you get in little minuscule writing on the last page it says consult your dentist or vet before you put it in the mouth because the bits are a round bit system mm. so if you don't adjust the bottom lower cheek tooth you might as well run the barbed wire in there because the, the are designed to curve round the bottom tooth. So as dentists, when you when you look at a animal that's got a bit, you have to curve the, the tooth. Because if you don't curve the tooth, you, you get like um, You get like a point on the front with a with a curve. So if you curve the tooth, the bit will sit flush and work properly. But if you don't, you just got a really big point that the skin can get trapped in, and the bit because it's a rounded system will push the skin over to the point. So we did thousands and thousands of horses and we took so on that basis, took thousands and thousands of thousands of bits back. <laughs> so on that basis, it's important for you to know what bit is going, isn't it? Yeah. So that you can yeah. make sure. We, we always ask. Right. Yeah. People change their bits all the time, like you oh, said. Yeah. So, yeah, so if, anything if you, you can do to the two. To adapt to the bit that they're using, it doesn't make any difference if they're then deciding to use something else. Well, it, it depends on what they change to. Right. You know, if they if they change to a round bit system, and they've got a say a helium in, yeah, and they change to a round bit system, the round bit system more than likely won't work. Okay. Because their their teeth aren't shaped to take it. And once they're shaped, there's no going back. Um, no, if if when you shape the teeth, you don't change the um, the dimension of the, the, the teeth. No. You just change the angle. Yeah. Of the mm. the angle in the front. Mm. So, so it has to be well thought out then. Really yeah. Well. Um, can't just be chop and change, as you say, as what's in fashion. Sometimes really lucky. Mm. 
Yeah, they just they just pop bits in and but um, unfortunately it, it sometimes doesn't go with the go with the horse. Mm. You know, what about the bitless bridles? Do you um, we we stock a range of bit, bitless bridles on the van or on the, all the vans. So if we if we've got a customer that we know after we've done a bit of extreme work, yeah. we're going to ride straight away. We loan, loan them a bit of bridle. Oh really? Yeah. Because it just it just some people are so insistent on riding straight away. Yeah. And you just can't stop it. Mm -hmm. So we just try and deflect it a little bit by lending them a bit of Mm. Do you see any major differences between bitless no. riders and people in the teeth or the... Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've, just I've got a hackney yeah. stallion that I drive in a bitless bridle yeah. and people say, oh, this, this, you're suicidal if, if <laughs> it takes off, if you'll never catch it. He's good as that He's been driving a bitless bridle for seven, eight years. He hates it when he goes in the show ring and he has to put a bit in. He detests it. Mm. Why is the hackamore so severe? I mean, that when I changed to one, and my mare, who, you know, she just ignored everything else, and then hackamore, it's like completely rounded and she stops was the stops the breathing. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Because when the, when the force comes into the behind of it, yeah. When you you take the contact on it, the nose piece stops the breathing. Oh. German hackles are really hard for that uh -huh. because they've got just long stems. Yeah. So the more leverage on yeah. it, the so so really I didn't even need more than an ounce or two, and she would just begin just to yeah. back off it. And yeah. oh, okay, okay. I was it wondering just, what the physical. Yeah, it, it just. Quietens the breathing down. Oof. Yeah. I had a Jack Russell. Yeah. Was very partial and stuff. Who? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he was in, in the back of the van. Um, we were at a show. Entertain yourself. He was really contented. <laughs> and then, I thought he was gone. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he was so proud of himself as well. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right, um, we're just going to go through the ageing chart. Um, when the foal's born, it's born with three cheek teeth either side. Lower. No incisors. Um, the incisors, the centre incisors, are the first ones to come through. And they come through within six to eight days. The reason they say that they don't come through is it stops the foal um, biting the mare when they're trying to uh, get to supple. Um, so it's six to eight days, and they're in wear at six to eight weeks. The second incisors break through the skin six to eight weeks. They're in occlusion or in wear six to eight months. And the cooler ones, they come through the skin six to eight months and they're in wear for about a year. It's very important that the incisors, baby incisors, come through straight because if they're crooked or um, malaligned, when the 
adult teeth come through, they trap them. And it's very, it's very common to get a retained incisor, and they're really hard to get rid of because they get stuck in between the adult teeth. Um, so, um, so that's incisors. Um, as I say, the cheek teeth, they're three um, either side, top and bottom, they're there at birth. When we look at a fold, we always check whether there's a covering, a skin covering over the three molars. If it's an early fold, there's normally a layer of skin over the, the three molars. If there is, we try and, because it's, it's a dead inert tissue, we try and scrape a rasp over it to, to break it up. If it's a late fold, they normally always gone through that because they grind themselves in their, in their mouth. One thing we haven't spoken about, and it's one of the, the things that cause so much, well, really problem, um, is wolf teeth. Wolf teeth are a throwback of fighting teeth. They sit through just there in the uh, jaw and they normally point forwards. They're really sharp and most animals that's where head shaking comes from. Because when you put a bit in there, when you take contact, you ruck up the skin and trap the skin in between the wolf tooth and the bit and it's like pushing on to a needle. The wolf teeth are designed for, um, they say, or they used to say, that it's only male horses that get wolf teeth. It's rubbish. Female horses can get wolf teeth. And it's all down to uh, how much um, male hormone they've got in their body. If you've got a mare that's a little bit mareish, nine times out of ten she'll have wolf teeth. Um, they, wolf teeth are funny, they're not like any other tooth. They don't have any root structure, they just sit in the gum. They sit in their, their own little capsule. Um, they're very easy to take out because no root. But, the um, main artery that runs down the inside of the tooth comes just about a quarter of an inch up from the, the bulb of the wolf tooth. So you have to be very careful how you take them out. If you pierce the artery, if you can't get it stopped, the blood stops, you've got about 12 minutes and then you have to find an insurance company quick. It's classed as an act of veterinary surgery to remove wolf teeth but you as an equine dentist you're allowed to remove them if they're loose Any anyone we have to take out is normally loose. Normally um, a vet taking wolf tooth out would sedate the horse but the only, the only thing with wolf teeth is you have to take the whole wolf tooth out. If you leave it or if you break it, you have to go back in and get it out. It's quite common if you break them and don't sort of go in to get the, the bits out, they'll regrow. And it's very embarrassing. We do recommend that after we take anything out, 
the customer does a course of salt water. It's, it's better than saline. It's it's really good for the for the mouth. So, so that's wolf teeth. The canine teeth, fighting teeth. Four four years, four and a half. So sort of, that's the average. And then we get um, the incisors start to change from baby teeth, you can see there, they've changed here already, but the uh, baby tooth has got like a little collar on it, so once, once the adult tooth starts pushing through, the collar will break and the milk tooth will fall out, and then the adult tooth will carry on erupting. Further back, the adult teeth start erupting, the first molar starts erupting at two and a half and comes into where at three. The second one, three and a half, comes into where at four, and four and a half comes into where at five. Then after those have gone, that's all the baby teeth finished. So, as such, that would make a full mouth. That was, in the olden days, the vet would, um, or the equine dentist, would class a full mouth as five. The molars don't have the last three molars don't have any baby teeth, they're just pure molars and they come through at one, two and three and they take a year to erupt and then they're into wear. So one of the most common things for ageing, horses tend to get cups in their teeth. They call it an infundibulum, and it's the passage where the nerve endings come up through the tooth. And you can see it's a little cup in the tooth. And they always come at five years of age. No one's worked out why it's five, but they always appear at five. And then the middle ones, the middle teeth, wear the cup out at six and then and after a year seven and then eight and then they transfer to the top nine, ten, eleven. So from five to eleven it's pretty good it's pretty easy to, to age them. The cups there. So it starts central and it then goes out. It starts central at the, the bottom yeah. and then goes out and then jumps up to the top central mm. and then goes out as well. So how old was this one? Um, this one was uh, coming, coming seven. Oh, she okay. died, she died having a foul. Belgian Arden. Unfortunately, one of the worst. But she works now. <laughs> um, so that's all the cups. On the corner teeth, just at the back of the tooth, they get to a hook, a little depression. That comes at seven, goes in nine, and then about twelve, and goes at fourteen, and sometimes it comes back about twenty-three, and it goes and it comes and goes because of the angle of the teeth. What we try and teach is 
if you look at the cups and make a diagnosis of the cups, you can verify that. So it's 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 about building up a picture of what you've got in the mouth. Yeah, the, the Galvin screw is reliable. Very much. Because it it doesn't go the same on both sides. Um, you can you can take a approximate sort of average. Yeah. Um, but sometimes you see the Galvin's grow gone right to the bottom and it not started the other side. Mm -hmm. um, but the uh, one of the things that is going to be a boom, a boom is this mustard colour. Mm. It's, it's, it's going to revolutionise 20 plus horses. Mm. I can show them, have a look. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, sometimes you get a, a little indent in the tooth where the mustard starts. Right. So you can run your finger up it and you feel it. Okay. Um, and the more the more the animal gets aged, the more mustard it it comes. Okay. Yeah. But I, I think it's zero days Oh lovely. Yeah, you should be able to see it from yeah. yeah. And I say it, it they think it's gonna be about a millimetre a year after twenty. So and it's it's quite accurate. Yeah, it's, it's a bit right here. Um, that's all we we do as as dentists. That's all we, we need to know. Um, so we can work on them until they're mid-table or mid-range of tooth and then you, you, we don't get as aggressive with the teeth after they get sort of 18, 20 because you, you, they get start getting softer and uh, with them being softer you don't want to disrupt the life of the tooth. And how do you work with parrot mouth talks or uh, do you work any differently or just we 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 have cow plates right. that go on the gag. Okay. So the the shorter of the jaw mm -hmm. uses the the regular gag. Mm -hmm. And the long piece of the jaw sits on the cow plate, which is a leather plate. Okay. Um, and then just do it normally. Yeah. The worst ones to to work on are sow mouth, where it's parrot mouth the other way. Right. Okay. They're just so hard to work on because when when you're rasping the the lower jaw. When you rasp the incisors, you're right at the end of the fulcrum of, of the jaw, so you get the most vibration on it, yeah. and it it scares some horses, it really does. And I'm going to ask why, because we don't often get a chance to speak to dentists. Yeah. Um, sheer mouse. Yeah. Do, what do you do? Because you do you um, find that the that, I mean they're usually quite difficult to fit and yeah and. and so it, it depends on the way the shear mouth is. Uh -huh. um, you have to correct the incisors to correct the molars. Right. Um, normally they have a smile mm -hmm. or um, a small tooth and a large tooth and they go across ways. You have to be very careful because if, if you change the angle on the incisors too drastically mm -hmm. you can't get the moulders to move so you have to be really careful how you adjust them yeah. we, we tend to do them about 
three visits. Right. We just adjust it and then perhaps a couple of months. And also, if you're adjusting the mouth that much, mm -hmm. um, you're putting pressure on all the muscles and the TM joint. So yeah. it, some, sometimes it, it feels that you're hurting the animal because you're changing the whole dynamics of the yeah. mouth. Yeah. So if you can do it slowly, it's much better. Okay. And I could ask. Sorry. No, that's <laughs> yeah. uh, TNJ. Yeah. Dysfunction. Yeah. Um, that seems to be quite a latest. Yeah, it's bad 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 yeah. But the vets are like liking to inject them. Yeah. Okay. Without yeah. sorting out the problem. I mean, do you see a lot of TNJ? Um, we see a lot of TNJ distur uh, disturbance uh -huh. because of bad teeth. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so the, the vein that goes down to the feet? Oh yeah, it can yeah. go right through yeah. the body. Yeah. 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 Right the body. Um, we've got a mare that we're treating at the moment that's almost banana shaped. Right, I see. And it stems from the head and the axis. Yeah. And uh, the guy that's physioing it is he's, he's, he's working wonders with it. He's, he's, it's, it's better every time you see it, but it's slowly, slowly, slowly. Yeah. Because it would be really nice. I mean, it's lovely that you've come to us today, but there's no education from dentists to the mm. Mm. There's nothing no. out there for us. No. They seem to want to keep it a closed shop, but it's such an it, important in part of the dentists. Yeah. I find that the dentists are very secretive. Yeah. You know. You, you get two or three dentists together, they won't tell you or they won't discuss where they go or yes. what customers they've seen. <laughs> you know, they're just it's so sad. <laughs> you know, there's, I, I find there's enough work to go around. So why would you hide where you're going? Mm. Yeah. You know? And also, um, I went down to your horse live and I targeted the horse dentist people down there oh, the and they because I work with cranial sacral so I find this quite yeah. interesting and they go straight in with the power tools yeah. mm. and I had to ask them why yeah. and because, and because it's a lot quicker yeah. 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 yeah and and then I asked about the banana yeah. boats it's, it's, it's all yeah. Money. yeah oh yeah but it's kind to keep the, the mouth open and get the job done quickly and oh, is you can actually just shake them, but mm. yeah. they must be giving out that. So what, what is the banana bit? It's where they, they sedate them and yeah. then they put them on there so the teeth oh. are oh. under even more oh. pressure. Oh. Yeah. And yeah. then they leave right. the mouth open. So there's and more and more they, pressure going on the they put, right. they put the stand right yeah. under the chin. Yeah. Mm. So as it it turns the TMJ. Yeah. Right. Oh. But then they're putting more pressure on the TMJ because they don't, they're sedated. Yeah. But, but then, then when they, then when they take the stand out, yeah. the horse, the horse goes, direction. and yeah. it changes. Yeah. Mm. yeah. We we've thrown all our stands away. But that's what they're teaching out there. Yeah. Because because they've got a very narrow pool of people that yeah. know what they're doing. Yeah. And but it's they, it's yeah. all political dentists. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they they're not interested in the health and welfare of the animal. Mm -hmm. They just just want to make a name for themselves. Yeah, but these were young. Oh yeah. Not yeah. young children, not young yeah. women, but they were which is great mm -hmm. that they've gone into that group. But they were so authoritative about that. Mm -hmm. They were so mm -hmm. close to anything uh, else. Yes. But they don't know any better, do they? No, they don't, but how do they educate them? Yeah. That's yeah. Yeah, that's the worrying point. Trouble is, they so won't change imagine. until <laughs> the people at the top yes. mellow. Yeah. yeah. Mm. You know. yeah. We, we do quite a lot of teaching specifically in Europe. And it's, it's really crazy how different people. Um, 
have different outlooks on, on what our conscience is. Yes. You know. Yeah, it's, it's horrible sometimes. Um, we had a course in about six weeks ago. And it's, it's a private funding course, they have to pay to come in. And we sent two home. The job isn't for you. Wow. It costs us a lot of money mm. to send them home, but they were horrendous. They just, I, I really have a problem when someone comes and you sit and chat with them and they, the first thing they say, or what they say is, um, how much money will I make doing it? It's not about that. No. It's, mm. it's, a, it's about care and, and consideration for the animal. But we get inquiries weekly, in some from the UK, that um, we've shut the college down now. But we still get inquiries. And, mm. and so, uh, if I've got to pay X amount to come and train, uh, how many horses have we got to do to, to get it back? Yeah, you know, it, 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 mm. should, it shouldn't matter, you know. So is it, it that there's more vets now doing teeth, or no. which way is it going the, the vets, if there's no training the vets, here yeah, the vets anymore? started doing teeth when the foot and mouth was about. <coughs> right. Because the foot and mouth stopped them going from yard to yard. But if they trained as dentists, they could still uh. travel from yard to yard. I think vets are also suffering a bit from social media, aren't they? In my area, someone will say, recommend me a good vet, and there's one vet that always gets negative uh, comments. I think they generally can the, get the, less work. The training mm. for a vet to do equine dentistry is three hours. Oh God. And they they watch a, a video for an hour. So I know mm. so I sold it to them. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, they they put a gag on once mm. and they rasp one if they're lucky, rasp one. But they don't they don't do a complete job. One of them does the lowers and one of them does the uppers or and one checks it and that's that's the end of it. Ah, so do they have to go to the States or somewhere to get the training now? No, they... they yeah, get it from books really, or...? Yeah. yeah. There's two certified dentists in the UK that work for two veterinary practices that do training for vets. Um, we do training for vets as well, but... It's all the vets when they train just want to, to do electrical work. Mm. They don't want to. They don't want to be bothered to. And the trouble is that the, the electrical gear. I mean, we've got three sets on the van at the moment. The electrical gear. There's only five types of burr that fit the most common electrical gear. Yeah. So, if you've got a horse that is, isn't in one of them five regular burrs, they, they get the teeth cut wrong because the, the burrs don't, the burrs only cut the teeth one way. Mm. So, if, if you're right outside the five prescribed shapes, forget it. Mm. So, any more questions, and then we'll go off to a little practical. Um, I'm just wondering, are there any sort of like trends you're seeing lately of issues, or are there any issues? Like I know you mentioned something before that's come in Iberians. Are there any like yeah. breed predilections? Um, people don't realise that the smaller they breed the animal, the more problems they're going to get, because um, enamel being the holy substance in the body, they can shrink the bones and 
everything down. But a miniature horse would have the same size teeth as a section A. So they can't shrink the teeth. So they've, they've got to come through somewhere. They must be tough to work on. Oh, they're horrendous. Bad enough to do their feet. They're horrendous. We, we have a, a group of ladies that show them. They, the, the leader of the group, um, she shipped a load in from the and she's got a um, sheep groomer and then they walk them into the sheep groomer and turn the handle and it comes up and so you work up here. And it's just fantastic. But we haven't had one to jump out yet. But They've started calling them for the show season, so you know, we're chasing, chasing around them and I'm an large for long, I think. We let Mike do them. He's quite big, so he's just catching them. Did you put them on something to do with their teeth? Put them on the yeah. table. Yeah, but um, normally they're standing on the back leg, so it doesn't really show <laughs> <laughs> your shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, all joking aside, we had made a special range of rasps for the miniatures. Mm -hmm. um, we had, we do a lot of contract work for Don Donkey Sanctuary down mm -hmm. in Devon. Mm -hmm. um, so we had, we commissioned a specific set of rasps for donkeys. You know, and you see someone that doesn't really do a lot of small animals or donkeys. Trying to rasp them with the rasp will they'll do a full size animal, you know, and it's, that's when you start getting blood and guts and this. Um, there's on the electrical side there's a, a machine called and it's technically it's an angle grinder and a pole. It's got like a, a little disc on it. Mm. It's all protected, it's, it's really nicely done. And it, it goes onto a Bosch drill. And you put on the tooth and fire the drill and it spins around and cuts the tooth down. It's really clever, really clever design. But it was designed by a vet that breeds shy horses. <laughs> Because shy horses are a little bit different, they sometimes get two, a bank of two last teeth. So there's no, nothing opposing them, so they, they have to be sort of <laughs> cut down. So he perfected this, it, I put one on the van, it, it's about that long. And it's great, you put it in, fire it. And I went to a yard. There was another dentist working, and he was got this, and he was doing a Shetland with it. Oh. But he was he was standing about here, and the Shetland was where the first skull was. And he was like, he had a assistant woman, and she was holding the mouth up, and he was going, mm. <laughs> could have killed her. Binoculars to see what the teeth. <laughs> They, they seem to be, don't, don't use the equipment for what it's made for, you know, and it's, it's horrendous. It's the job that's, to the that's, that's lack of training. So have we lost regulation over here now, or yeah. did we ever get it, or no, we almost got it? We almost got it, and we had an exam. Yeah. Was, was you know, really be all well end all. Yeah. But then it didn't get white paper reading in the parliament, so it didn't go through. And then wasn't there a the degree? Um, no. no it was, that, they got stopped. Right. And it, uh, it only it spilled out about 20 candidates. But they had to, <laughs> they charged an awful lot of money yeah. to, to go and do it. But in the third year, when they needed to do the practical, 
the dentist had to find someone to go with. Didn't wasn't interested. Right. So everyone that was phoning up and saying, I'm a graduate, can I come and stay with you for three months and yeah. learn how to do the practical? Yeah. No, sorry. <laughs> so it's all collapsed. So, uh, oh. For three terms, they had a guy reading out the, or reading off the BHS manual. Oh. Because the, the, the teaching at home was only two modules on a Friday afternoon. It was only for an hour, hour and a half. And the rest was the uh, nutrition and science degree. So they exactly dentistry on the side of it. Yeah. They asked us if we'd like to go and lecture. But they were paying, I think, an hour for three hours on a Friday afternoon, <laughs> finishing at four o'clock. Ah. No. <laughs> I don't think so. No. I don't think we can afford that. <laughs> but it's a shame. It's, it's yeah, it's critical, really, I isn't mean, it? The best training, the 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 American has cut out all the electrical gear. Mm. It's gone back to hand grasping. Ah. Because they've seen the error of the ways. Um, and it's still the best training in the, in the world. Okay. Yeah. Mm. My stepbrother wouldn't agree because he runs the uh, dental college in New Zealand, so <laughs> he thinks he's the best. But, uh -huh. <laughs> but I mean, there's, there's some really, really good. English trained dentist about. Yeah, yeah. You know? mm. but, uh, we don't buy training in England and the falling flat. They've got no um, accreditation apart from the insurance companies. That's frightening. Yeah. And it's frightening because they good people out there. Yeah. You know, yeah. And a lot of good people doing good work. Yeah. And helping a lot of horses. Yeah. There's some rugs. Horses. Mm. But, uh, very mm. but there's no is there no register now or there is a BADT? There is a BADT approved list. So that's what goes up and down. Uh, oh, okay. Sorry, do that again. Obviously, because Ooh, of the lateral way it moves, that's why it's it not. It goes up and down, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's not symmetrical with each tube yeah, because it, you're going. It's, yeah. it's normally, the fall is normally opposite mm -hmm. the tube. Mm -hmm. Chewing on this side and this side was still high, there'd be a restriction. And if you look at the TMJ, how wide it is, it's quite substantial. Yeah. Yeah. Always surprised me how different they are in St. Paul's. Mm. Oh! <laughs> if, you, if you look at the one you just looked at, yeah. The condole across the top mm. is so different. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's really thick there. Yep. Yeah. And that's really thin there. So would it be something to do with the muscle attachment and that enlarging because it's under more strain? Uh, for some reason. They, Maybe. They, they think it's due to. Um, the way the foal lays in the stomach mm. because the, the calcium mm. that starts all the press process off, yeah. the calcium falls to the, yeah. it's heavier. Oh. So it's 
got more calcium. Fascinating. Contracted tendons, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Lines, like lines, calcium yeah. Deposits, yeah. It's like, um, you know, the, the um, calcius that attracts on male canines, on the lovers. It doesn't attract in mares because they store it in the body. Because if um, they go into foal, they've got already supply calcium for the foal. Yeah. And if they have the first season, um, if they're not in the foal, um, when they urinate, it's a green, creamy mm. colour. Yeah. It's, it's washing, washing all the calcium out. We're obsessed with, with washing yeah. all the <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah. So. Yeah. My mum's obsessed with um, coming home with the urine dip kits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pinch them from the practice and stand for them. That's a cap, isn't it? Or is it an no, old tooth? No, it's an old tooth. It's an old tooth, right. Shoddy work. Shoddy work. Is that not an example of shoddy work? With wolf teeth. On the first visit when we find them, we tend to rasp them at a different angle. So they become per, part of the first tooth. Sure. Two teeth. And normally you can get away with leaving them. Um, the joy of rasping them um, is because they haven't got any root structure, you loosen them and they're full of full yeah. 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 Okay. You quite often go to a pony that has got wolf teeth and when you come back next time they're, they're gone. Yeah. So we, we try and give them a little bump. <laughs> Basically, and blew the piece of its skull off. Oh, um, we couldn't, we couldn't get the wrist or the, the other bit out to start with. 